first thing that I want to say really is I think this project addresses three of the key things that historians as teachers are, are thinking about, really, have been thinking about for some time, uh, how we can teach historical thinking, the transition to university, and how we might use e-learning or digital resources. And I want to uh, commend uh, everybody on the project team because I've actually had a look at many of the resources that they've been developing. And I'm really impressed with them, uh, especially doing the quizzes, which like many students, I also quite liked doing. I just want to make three broad points, and some of these have been covered before, uh, so I may repeat, be repeating things or emphasizing particular things. And the first point that I want to make is that for students, history is quite a difficult subject to address for reasons that Arthur particularly uh, has talked a little bit about. When they come to us, according to the surveys that I, that I did at Nottingham, the uh, students, many of them came thinking that they were attempting to retrieve the facts and to somehow get these to present the truth um, about it. When I did the surveys in the first week, that's what an awful lot of them felt. So our job really uh, in the first year is to get them to think historically, uh, to think about the past as different but, but the same, to look at historical issues from different perspectives, see things in different ways, and to see history as more complex and uncertain than they do when they start. And it's to get them to try to act like historians by retrieving information, scrutinizing different kinds of evidence, primary and secondary sources and so on. And I believe also it's about getting them to feel like they belong to a community, a community of historians, that they are historians. This is what I think we try to do. There are many ways of attempting to do this in the first year. I've seen a lot of different ways of doing it, sometimes through separate skills modules, sometimes by discussing these issues on the courses that they do in the first year, the big survey courses. But the most successful things, I think, are things that have been illustrated uh, in the course of this day. Firstly, a focus a focus on the skills they need, on the procedural skills they need, about what evidence means and how to handle it. A focus on what history is, uh, sometimes through historiography or history theory, or sometimes through history of the profession, seeing how that's changed. Uh, a focus on relevance, and this is really important, a focus quite quickly on why history should matter to these students. Because if it doesn't matter them, to them quite quickly, why should they actually come to the lectures or bother with engaging with more difficult concepts as they go through the course? And also a focus, I think, in the best of the approaches, on what the students' conceptions are, what their preconceptions are, what things do they bring about history to the learning that they're doing. And more broadly than that, about their preconceptions about learning. What, when they come to us, do they think a teacher is and should do? What do they think assessment is and is for? So the first point that I make is that I think that thinking like a historian is about more than history. It's about their conceptions of the subject, but also their conceptions of learning, their habits of studying, and their self-constructs, things that they bring to the whole process of studying, and we need to be aware of that. My second point is this, that uh, transition to is a complex issue because it is not one thing. The students are facing multiple transitions, not only transitions to new subject matter, but transition sometimes to a new place, to a new university, to a new department, to new personal and social relationships, to new ways of constructing themselves. And we need to take that into account. 
And I think it's worth remembering that transition isn't something that's over after they've done the skills module. Uh, it's something that goes on, in a sense, through their history degree. And the transitions, if we can pluralise it, uh, that they make are not just intellectual transitions. We need to be aware that this is an emotional journey studying history that they're on. We too often don't take that into account. But when I asked a, a group of students, history, third year history students, about their views on their experience, one of them said, it's been a roller coaster of emotions. And that brings up the point that confidence is absolutely key to this, and this came out in some of the presentations earlier. Students fear, uh, they're fearful of putting their points of view forward. So transition is complex, uh, that's my second point. And I suppose to add to, to it, a rider to that, it's even more complex because it's not just the students we're talking about. Quite a lot of our students are being taught by postgraduate students, who themselves are going through a transition as historians and as teachers. And we need to think about how those things fit together. The third point that I want to, to raise as, is that we definitely need to engage students as actively as we possibly can. When they come to us, my experience is that students are intrinsically interested, despite some cynicism amongst us as tutors. They enjoy doing history and they want to enjoy it, but quite often their knowledge comes from their teacher. And I think that's something we need to, to, to think hard about. The other thing that's true from a long experience that I have is that they don't like doing skills, they don't like doing history theory or history historiography, and their view on those is they're not relevant to them, uh, they're boring, they're too abstract, and they're just too removed from studying Hitler, which is why they might have come, whatever subject it is in history. And I think what we've seen through the day are some of the ways that we can address that. And the most successful ways, and these are ways that you've tried in the project, I think, a variety, attempting a number of different things with them, not just sticking with one thing. Uh, relevance, trying to think what it is that actually will be relevant to their lives, and the technology comes in to some extent there. Uh, learning by doing, that the students are getting the students to actually do history, not just learn about it, but actually to get their hands dirty and do it. And this is something they appreciate, whether in uh, individual project work or collaborative project type work. Allowing them to be creative. This seems to me very important. We forget often how creative the students are when you let them free. We're too worried about them, we want to support them and so on, but sometimes if you let them free, they can do tremendously creative things. Carefully thought out scaffolding, I think that is really important. And what it includes is plentiful in the first year, formative and forward-facing constructive feedback. All of these things, I think, are really important. And I think the digital resources that we have make these things even more possible. There are more historical sites and resources available than there are probably too many ever have been. Part of the problem is there are, there are so many of them. And there are an awful lot of things, as we've seen, that students can do online that vary their activities and so on. I just want to make these points about uh, the online element, and that is that we mustn't forget that personal relationship with teachers is still very, very important uh, to the students. We shouldn't sort of think we can get rid of that because we have online learning, student satisfaction surveys all say that. And sometimes, although the students are very adept users of technology, they're not always adept learners with technology. 
And the final point I would make on that is it's important to integrate, properly integrate the technology into the programs. And that integrative thing is something that we struggle with today, I think. And everybody who tackles this struggles with it, and perhaps we're not going to solve it, but we can try. So those are a few of the things that I want to raise. I don't want to dominate this particular session. But I just want to make one final point, and that is my experience is that quite often what I'm trying to do in year one with our history students is in a strange way getting them to unlearn rather than learn, to get them to examine what their preconceptions, their assumptions, their views about history and about learning are and then say, can you let these go? And that is a very risky thing for them to do. But if they can do that, they can then begin to become much stronger as in the sort of independent, critically reflective learners who are acting with some degree of agency that we all say that we want them to be.